Hello, everyone. As we stated a couple of weeks now, we've been saying that we're going live on Facebook for the first time. So welcome, everyone, to another episode of Life Chat with Viv and Bell. I see my co-host, she's not with me today. She's in a car traveling. And we have an awesome guest with us today. And we're going to have him introduce himself to our audience and tell us all about yourself. Caffeine? <laughs> Thanks, Viv. Uh, thanks for having me on. It's uh, absolutely a pleasure. Um, I'm definitely happy to be part of your movement and uh, just sharing this space with you. Uh, my name is Kafane Williams. I'm a developmental coach uh, with a meditation base. I'm here to talk about uh, a lot of different things. Um, uh, I don't know where you want to start. I have so much things I want to talk about. Well, well, all right. Let me ask you this question: Why meditation and, and yoga? Why, what, you know, why did you choose that field? And how did you choose that field? I'm going to tell you the truth. You know, um, I've been a lifelong athlete and um, I had a friend who was very young and he had like, uh, one day he called me, he told me he was replacing his hip or something. And I'm like, what? I was like, you're replacing your hip. You're like 22. It's like, yeah, from martial arts, I injured my hip and now my knee's messed up. And um, I had a conversation with, with, a, with a coach. He said, you know, you have to you know, have for preventative maintenance all the time and make sure you don't injure your knees, your back, your shoulders. And so I got into yoga. But um, as I started, you know, getting that inner balance, inner peace from yoga, I dipped into meditation. And the meditation really, um, it helped me really understand the inner voice, like and really listen to myself, you know. So it actually started as a, a way to make sure I, I wasn't like uh, 50 with a bad back. <laughs> to, to um, what it is developed into right now, actually. Mm -hmm. Cool. And what, what year was this? Oh, what year was this? Um, I think this was 2011, 2010, I like to say. And what type of yoga do you do? And what style of yoga or style of meditation that you do practice? Oh, I do um, power yoga. It's like a more fast and intense kind of yoga. Uh, reason why I do that is because power yoga. Yeah, power yoga. So it's like more dynamic movements. It's like a stanga to another level. So basically, um, a basic move like a three-legged downward dog with the leg kick forward into a warrior one. Instead of nice easy transition, will be an inhale, exhale to a stronger transition. But but that's just my personal preference, and that's where I started. Mm -hmm. But I've uh, now adapted different styles and put uh, a more organic base into it, mm -hmm. right? So it's not, what does it's that not mean, that. organic base? Um, yoga is like a lot of people have a lot of preconceived notions about yoga. Like, you know, I have to be like a certain person. I have to wear some beads or a, yoga, a toga. I have mm -hmm. to have a ponytail. It's not really like that, you know. Um, Yoga is its own experience, and your experience in your class is actually your experience. So you don't have to be an expert. You don't have to do it for 30 years, you know. Um, yogis in India actually say uh, yoga is not like an exercise. It's a practice. Every day you're practicing, and you're mm -hmm. practicing with yourself, you know. So it, an organic base is simply what it is. It's like you know, every day you get on your mat and you uh, execute your routine. It's basically just a... Uh, a uh, uh, time you spend with yourself is just a personal organic, you know, fix. Because I've heard of um, hot yoga and regular yoga that I used to say when the doctors tell me I need to do yoga. I'm like, oh, it's so boring. I'm um, down, dog, up, dog. I make faces while I'm doing it. the exercises. So, it's so power yoga is more exciting, or you know, I want to know because I get bored with you know up dog. Warrior pose. <laughs> you know, for a person that like, <clears throat> for a person that likes to do like dynamic stuff, mm -hmm. that's what you need to do. You know? oh, right. If you're a CrossFitter, you should do it. If you're like a person who uh, used to be a gymnast, you should do it. If you're the kind of person that goes to the gym and you need to throw things around to get excited, you should do power. If you're someone who is not really into that dynamic movement, you should do like a yin yoga or it's slow, you're holding poses for, let's say, a minute, two minutes, three minutes, you know? Mm -hmm. So power is definitely, it's a, 
Yeah, so it's a uh, it's its own tool, right? You have to have, actually have a, a nice little uh, view of what you want to achieve in, in the yoga so to really take take that power into consideration. So I'm going to ask you a question before I lose um, connection here. And first of all, let me add my welcome to having you here. And I'm not sure if our audience is aware that you are calling from Grenada. Is that correct? Antigua. Oh, um, Antigua. currently I'm calling, Antigua. calling from Antigua. Right, right. So, you know, thank you so much. And I noticed looking at your information on your Facebook page, your international um, fitness um, person. And so mm -hmm. yoga is just a part of your regime, of your fitness. Mm -hmm. Now, um, right. how important is fitness and health? Do you want to um, just talk about that so our audience will understand the importance and why we are bringing this on so that we, you know, um, it, it's life and we want to make sure that they are healthy. But how do both things go together? You're, you're correct in all those statements. I'm a, I'm a pro trainer. I train trainers into uh the organizational structure which I work for, I actually work for a corporation. They own hotels, and uh, in those hotels, they have uh, any program that's in their all-inclusive package. We do like yoga, kickboxing, boot camp, TRX, and I train the trainers in that. Um, fitness and life and spirituality and all those things. That's all about the universal balance, right? If you're going towards a goal. You should probably be in the best mental shape and also physical shape to put your best foot forward to prepare yourself for it. Like I think it's it's just it's just super important for you to have like a routine, not only to like just to build, but to actually de-stress and to also put yourself in a better position. I remember uh, when I first started training, and um, I used to read these um, just training guides, right? and um, very interesting information that used to just pop out. I remember one very uh, just unique situation that said like all the top CEOs in the world, they have one habit in common in, in regards to fitness. Like they all wake up early and run, right? And I was like, that's unique. And the reason I bring it up is because no matter what you do in life, you there has to be something that brings you back to that balance, right? Right. So to me, it's yoga because I have like a, a fast paced kind of situation. I'm on a plane, you know, I'm in different environments. I need something to calm me down. Let's say if you had like a high paced job, you might want to go run. Right. Let's say if you had, you know, something where you need to be very structured, you might want to do a little uh, lift, might want to lift a little weights. You know, if you want to always keep the balance and be at the same uh, even keel, you might want to have a routine. It's very important to have your body working because your body and your mind need to work together. You're just like a car and the way you burn oxygen is important. So let's say if you're not burning your oxygen right, if you're not carrying your weight right, if you're, you know, your balance, your body isn't that balanced, then truly are you at your best? You could be the, you know, you could be the highest achiever, but like you can't like, you know, walk to your car comfortably, walk around the park comfortably, enjoy daily life activity with your children and your wife, your spouse, or your, your friends. Really, there's a, you know, the, the even balance really isn't there. So I think it's, uh, it's very important to have uh, a healthy uh, habit, such as working out. So to balance the, the life habits, like work, play, and everything, very, very important. Absolutely, absolutely. We need a balance in life. And have you had people who um, came to you and they had a medical problem, a medical issue, and just from doing yoga or being enrolled in your activities, your fitness activities, have seen a resolution of what they, they had, the illness they had without taking um, prescribed medication? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, we could, oh. There's so much stories I could tell you, but um, I will just stick to one client in particular. Uh, guy was a party promoter, real big guy. Um, he's getting, he was 
flying to Africa, this, that, and the third. He came to me. He was like, hey, listen, I'm dating this girl. I need to lose some weight, right? But um, so we did a medical work, and this guy was uh, almost diabetic. <laughs> he he uh, had some respiratory problems, this, that, and the third. Um, had scoliosis, and it was just actually to really break it down. And you know, when you're doing training, a lot of people think I'm just going to go to the gym and work out. But no, all, all training is going to stop you right there at the door and making sure that, you know, your range of motion is OK, making sure you're in the proper physical condition workout, make sure your cardiovascular is good. And all those things is going to affect you positively going forward. And in his case, what happened is that, you know, that that risk of diabetes, you know, was diminished eliminated you know because we got that body weight down right and now his stomach wasn't here and his waist wasn't there right we got the cardiovascular right and you know in his family actually they had a history of heart conditions so i was very concerned of how he was consuming uh his meals and what he was consuming right so uh it was a lot of things we did to prevent him from going down the wrong path and of course like with the spinal problems then we uh did some things as far as, you know, adjust his anterior and posterior delts, his core strength, and also his, his, his weight displacement so that, you know, structurally he'd be all right and there wouldn't be any uh, breakage, fusion, or even a deterioration of the spine. So. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So what benefit have you received being that you've been doing this for years? Um, in doing yoga and meditation? Um, I've received so much benefits and it's not like just a financial situation. I truly think that I've learned to listen to my inner voice better. And that comes from, you know, making sure that my my body feels good, my, my, my confidence is good, my self-awareness is good. And, um, my flow, my ebb and flow is good, right? Because I believe in a lot of, with energy, right? So if I'm in a bad state, consuming bad things, if, you know, I'm not, you know, surrounding myself with right people, then, you know, everything is off, off balance. This has affected me in such a, a, a positive way is that, you know, my energy is now positive, my environment is positive. Mm -hmm. my, my physically, I feel better, right? The meditation is giving me, give me much much needed balance, right? And I was able to actually have better conversation with myself by listening to the thoughts which are going through my brain, like, you know, because we're all rushing and pacing, but it's a, that real understanding to say, oh, you know what? These are the things that are important to me. This is the direction I want to go in life. And um, it's just, it's been just stacking up, definitely stacking up to the point where, you know, I had a gym and actually stole the gym for a profit. And was able to, you know, uh, go from an entrepreneur into like a corporate structure and mm -hmm. still able to like, you know, really push others forward from even this position. So uh, it's, it's done a lot, for me. It's done a lot for me uh, mentally and physically. Awesome, awesome, awesome. What's your next question, Vilma? I guess she doesn't have another question. Okay, so it's, it's a little noisy here. But um, I'm, I'm loving what I'm hearing. So what do you have for our audience as they listen? And I've not seen any questions as yet um, that they are asking on Facebook. But what would you say to our audience listening right now about enrolling in some form of activity. They do not necessarily have to be at um, a gym, but what are some things that they can do at home? For example, they may not have the ability to enroll in a gym, but are there things that they can do at home to maintain fitness as well as um, maybe get something online? Not, not to take you out of business, but just in case. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, we're on we're online too. <laughs> but um, there are a, a plethora of things that um individual could do. I'm a big fan of walking. Um, 
walking with intention, like, all right, let's say if I walk for 20 minutes just to get that fresh air and that clarity, it changes your whole disposition. It changes it completely. And just to have something that you're doing on a regular basis that develops your discipline, right? So the first thing I would tell anyone, like, hey, go for a walk today. Go for a walk tomorrow. Go for a walk the next day. Right. It's unlike running. It's not like I'm not going to tell anyone, hey, run every single day, run every other day, every three days, run twice a week. But walking is something that you can do that's going to, you know, give you some good oxygen. It's going to work your cardiovascular. It's going to work your upper and lower body. Right. And it's also going to add clarity. You know, you can live in a city or you can live in a suburb. If you go walking for like 20 minutes a day, that's going to really impact you. Uh, greatly. If you are unable to do so and you're at home, something as simple as, you know, putting a chair in front of you and doing a, a squat from the chair. And it's not like a deep muscular squat. It's just sit in the chair, put your hands on the side and help yourself up. You stand up and you sit down. What that's going to do, that's going to help you develop your, uh, your outside vascules, which are quadriceps, right? It's going to help you develop that lower back muscles, which is very important. You always want to have a strong lower back, strong shoulders when we talk about development. So you can do a chair squat, right? It's also going to help you lubricate those knees because knees we really want to watch out for. Another thing you could do is um, like a plank. Holding your body in that position, it does a lot for you. And a lot of people don't really consider a plank to be such a dynamic workout. But from your knees or off your knees, doing a plank is going to, engage your core it's going to engage your your hip flexors it's also going to engage your traps and it's basically it's going to make you structurally better and when you're structurally better you're breathing better you're burning better and you're moving better right and that's just that's a way you can just boost your confidence right away and i can't forget the uh, good old push-ups you know so you could do squats planks and um push-ups and they, they can all be done in a safe way all right, there's modifications and it's gonna help you just really have the idea. It's gonna plant the seed and it's gonna allow the seed to grow for you to do bigger and better things. It's all about finding some consistency in your life and also building the, the, the callus and the confidence, right? To know that you can have a more disciplined routine. I have a question for myself. I wanted to know, what's the best, ex <laughs> what's the best <laughs> exercise that one can do to get rid of their abs. Because, you know, a lot of people have, you know, that love handle and mm -hmm. different things like that. So that's something I want to know for myself because I hear so many different things that one can do that will help with the the core. Okay. Well I'm gonna give you uh I'm gonna give you a pro tip. <laughs> All right. So um, first thing you have to know is what are your measurements? Okay, what's your stomach? The belly button, above your belly button, below your belly button, your hips and your thighs, right? Once you know those, then you got to really look at how does your body really burns, right? So you can do uh, jumping jacks, burpees, and uh, let's say you do some sit-ups. Let's do that three times a week. And you do your measurements, right, every other day. So you're doing this, this routine for six weeks, right? And you'll be able to gauge how your body is taking to the workout, right? It's not going to instantaneously really break it down, but by you actually knowing where your body is moving, you're going to be able to like adapt the workout. So to answer your question, the best thing to actually get that body you want is to use a tape measure. That's your, some people hire trainers just to hold the tape measure, right? I'm not going to give you the cookie cutter, uh, uh, basically answer because I can't, I don't believe in that from a professional standpoint, because every person is individually unique, right? When you're talking about getting the abs, you have to consider genetics. You have to consider your uh, burn ratio. You have to consider your consumption. You have to consider your sleep. You have to consider age. You got to consider a lot of things, but in order for you to actually go on that personal journey and actually, you know, look at what it is that you need to do or what it is that you don't need to do to get that, Six pack, start with the tape measure. Start with the tape measure, know the measurements. Okay. So you're not gonna tell me what exercises I need to do? To I'm not gonna tell you like those exercises, right? I'm just gonna give you a three, right? Give a burpee, do some sit-ups, okay. right? Some jumping jacks, because mm -hmm. those workouts right there, they're gonna basically get you sweating, right? 
So the first thing that's going to burn when you're working out, you're going to burn your sugars, right? You're going to drop the water, then you're going to burn your fat. So what's going to happen first, the sugar is going to start burning out your body, right? Water is going to stop dropping out your body, then regulating. And then after a while, when you have that muscle development, what's going to happen is, is it's going to have that fat burn. And you're going to have the sculpting going on, right? So I can only give you some dynamic stuff, right? Uh, the dynamic stuff is going to help, but the tape measure is going to basically get you from point A to point B to point C. Okay. Um, I love walking. I hate push-ups. <laughs> I hate burpees. But I know when you do um, exercise, you need to get in both cardio as well as weight training. Correct. Right? So mm -hmm. a person like me who hates sit-ups, hate burpees, but I will walk and I will try to lift a little bit of weight. Am I doing justice or do I need to step it up a notch? I think you just need to know exactly what it is that you're doing. You might need a little Fitbit to see how much you're walking, right? And if those exercises that you hate to do is, is going to be like, is a reason why you have uh, a, a desire not to do those exercises. It could be like you're not confident in that area, you're not proficient in the area, meaning like you don't really know the technique that's going to help you. So there's a lot of modifications. I'm lazy. There. I'm lazy for the pain. <laughs> I don't want the pain. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, too, that too could be a, a, a blockage, right? So, um, you know what they made? They made a resistance band. They made a resistance band just for that alone. So you could do walking and you can do resistance bands for different areas of your body. But you know what they say, no pain, no gain. Don't be scared of the pain. Absolutely. My husband laughs at me because I use three pounds, but it's better mm -hmm. than none or one. He says, that ain't going to do anything, babe. But I know it does, right? Yeah, you, you feel it. You feel it. You're on a journey, right? So what about those individuals Absolutely. who, yeah, sorry. What about those individuals who are overweight? And um, I know you said to, to just get your body going and they feel like they can't do what you suggested with the chair, you know, sit in the chair and push themselves up or they can't then feel like, okay, I don't know if I can able to walk, my ankles hurt, my knees hurt. What other thing would you suggest for them to just start or whatever, maybe because they can't push themselves up. Um, what would you suggest? And maybe they would be afraid to go outside. I don't know what it is, but for someone who's obese and they need to start a routine, what would you suggest for them to do? I would suggest for them to strengthen their core. Like if you're having um, movement and mobility issues, you have to strengthen your core, similar to like doing Pilates. So imagine like I'm having difficulties moving around and walking. Lay on your back, right? As you lay on your back, you extend your leg out, right? Raise and lower your leg, right? And that's going to help you strengthen your core. First thing first, you got to have a plan, all right? The plan, no plan, no success, <laughs> all right? So first thing first, have a plan, all right? This is, this is where I'm at. This is where I want to go. This is where I'm thinking step one is. This is where I think step two is. Right, but a strong core is going to help a person who has any mobility issues to really uh, get to the next level. Because if I, I'm overweight or I have mobility issues, I need to strengthen my core. So if you can't do a push up, can't do a squat, you can't you can't move around for a long period of time. Okay, I can work my heart rate by doing leg flutters. Okay, I feel like my leg is too 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 heavy. I could do one leg flutter. Okay, I think that my legs are too heavy. I can move my arms, okay? Like, there's different things you can do to really build yourself up, but let's everything be uh, around the core. Once you have a, a good core, you can increase your range of motion. Once you increase your range of motion, then your body automatically is burning more calories in order for you to, like, execute those basic functions, right? So strong core first, right? Well, plan first strong core, range of motion, and then just the measurables. Like how would you measure success? Like how are you gonna earn your next gold medal? 
right? Your next gold medal could be just standing up, walking to the front door and walking back. Your next gold medal could be walking to the to the uh, mailbox, getting the mail and coming back. Like your next gold medal could be actually, you know, doing a 20 arm ups each each day. You know, you got to have a plan. And um, that core is very important because, you know, you want to be preventative, but you also want to be progressive. That's Go ahead, Bill, man. It looks like you have something. I don't know if she's talking to us or she's talking to um, the car. Let me ask you, too. Have you guys, have you guys done any meditation? No, we, I oh. haven't. Well, I meditate. I, I was talk. I was. I was. I was answering your question. I didn't realize I was on. Yeah, I was muted. Was she knows she's on mute. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. So I. I thank you. Um, how supportive you are of that person who's just starting out to exercise. I. I love those incremental um, levels that you have pointed out. And to go to your question that you just asked, I do not do meditation. I am not a kind of a meditation kind of a person. However, I do spend quiet time. Okay, and that I was going to be my counts. next question. That was going to be my next question. That quiet time is so important. It's mm -hmm. so, so important. Uh, a couple friends of mine, they, they actually... They wake up in the morning and the first thing they do is spend that quiet time. That quiet time is, is so important. And I like, I don't want to sound all, you know, uh, like everyone else, like, oh, in the morning, don't check your phone and don't do this. But it's like, you're going to need some kind of start point. You might as well start with you in mind first versus everything else, because you cannot pull everything else without, you know, first you come and up, rising, setting yourself to have the strength to carry your, your burden, your cross, your bag, your, your, your day, right? So that I, I'm definitely a big fan of quiet time if you don't meditate. Yeah. Well, I do, like, Bill must this quiet time, and I do take that time early. Well, 6 o'clock in the morning, I get up and spend that it's good. time. <laughs> and I do read my Bible and just reflect. Yeah. You know, or, you know, to me, meditation, going over my scripture, or visualizing what I'm reading or whatever it may be. And that's what I do um, on a daily basis. So that, and oh, that's I, I basically don't drive. I don't drive either with music. I like quiet in my car. I don't like noise. Okay. That, that, that time that you get with yourself, it, it's, it's important. Um, during some of our meditation classes, like, we really speak a lot about being empathetic to yourself, you know, being compassionate with yourself. And in regards to that, also listening to yourself, you know, playing the role of the listener. Because in the role of the listener, you are you are empowered, right? You've set things in, in action within your daily functions, right? Like automatically, you know how to stand up and go to the fridge and go get a glass of water right? You know how to do a high five, right? You've automated so much of your life is that like your brain is always racing. And then your desires, your thoughts and those things that she's like, oh, that's important. That's important. That's important. Like you, you're basically like you've automated so much things is that, you know, your brain races. So that that time that you get to disconnect and actually listen and choose exactly what it is that you're going to put your attention towards or on is very important. So anything that you can do to disconnect and like reset and to listen is is, is as important as lifting a dumbbell, <laughs> right? Well, I have a question for you. Now, what can one expect when they come into one of your classes, say either meditation or yoga? What, what can one expect to receive from you or to experience? An experience. An experience is the word. I think an experience is the word. Um, we come through the door with expectation and they leave out the door with empowerment, right? What they should expect is absolutely nothing and absolutely everything at the same time, right? When you get to your mat, 
you're on your mat, what happens is that, you know, you're thinking, oh, what am I doing next? What am I doing? What am I doing now? Did I leave the stove on? What am I doing tomorrow at 4.45? You know, but after a period of time, all that, all that just disappears. All that just it vanishes. And then what happens is that you know everything comes together the right way. Um, it just you leave what they say. The yogis say we leave everything on our mat. You leave your stress. You leave your heartache. You leave your self doubt. You leave your fear. You leave your ego, right? Because to do <laughs> to do some of these poses in a hold, and you like. You really got to just just give up and say, okay, I'm not going to fight no more. I believe I'm good. I'm going to do this. I don't need to challenge. I don't need to prove myself to anyone. Like you leave a lot on the mat. And when you leave out the door, you're, you're refreshed, you're rejuvenated. So someone should expect, you know, to actually feel re-energized, reinvigorated when they, when they come and, and leave out the door, you know? So you can bring anything that you want to class, but when you leave, Gonna leave everything on the mat. And is it the same thing for meditation? Like, what? How? Do oh yeah, do definitely you know? the same thing for meditation. But um, currently, like, I do two kinds of meditation, right? Um, there's actually four really major kinds of meditation: transcendental, visualization, action meditation. Uh, what I do is basically I I tailor make the meditation for clientele some some clients are their visual persons right so let's say you have a great you have a great goal in mind visually i can actually help you create the thought within your mind through your meditation we could constantly 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 work at clearing the fog between you and your objective right now some people are very uh hypersensitive like they need to feel it right just imagine this for a second, then. Imagine you are in a down state, depressed, right? Through the meditation and through the formation of meditation that will work for you, what we can do is get you to remember and feel happiness and joy in your body. Because your body is a computer. It's going to remember joy. It had to learn joy and I had to learn what happiness was in order for it to actually know when to do it, right? You never forgot that. It's in there somewhere, but like your state is not conducive to that at that, at, at that moment. So what we do is basically when we're trying to get somebody out of like depression or something like that is, is that we have to then build the senses, remind the body, give them something to, to really hold on to. That's the end really get the breath and go on to like let's feel like you're having the worst day you're having the worst day in your life but you remember joining your body and how you can activate that joy is okay and let it go just let it go look at me my state is different inhale exhale and i let it go so we do a definitely definitely a lot of different meditations you know we we'll do a meditation for someone who needs to achieve we're we'll doing meditation for someone who needs to heal we we'll do a meditation for someone who needs to be aware but all of it, I want it to be organic because I feel like for me to tell you a bunch of uh, instructions is not as effective as for you to actually have a better interaction with yourself during that. So you basically ask yourself what it is that you want. Because the voice inside knows everything. The voice inside knows you better than I will ever know you, even if you were my child and I watched you from, from, from the time you were born you know, and I, you know, I examined you. that inner voice knows everything because like, I think like our senses really pull us and draws us towards what it is that truly, you know, sparks our, our, our follicles, and entertains our, our, our true being. So were you going to, I, Vivian, I'm not sure if you want us to want him to do this now, take us through some yeah, yeah, I told him towards the end he can do that. But um if he wants to do it now, he can. <laughs> yeah, we could do we could do some right right now, right? Because like I really want to help you. I want to help your audience and anybody who watches this. I think she's really, 
adaptation. Okay. You were frozen, Vilma. What were you saying towards the end? She's still with us. She's still frozen. Okay. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> there we go. You were frozen, Vilma. What were you saying towards the end? Turn left and immediately turn left and get off. And right. um, I will get in my meditation. Okay, go ahead into the meditation. Okay, all right. So, um, I'm so happy to do this with you guys because I get to really, <laughs> I get to break up the, uh, the, uh, the narrative, right? And I, 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 I relish the, the, at the thought of just really breaking up the narrative because some people think like. To meditate, you gotta be in complete stillness and complete silence. Your brain is not racing, nothing is happening. That is not basically what's happening. The best yogis will tell you. Like, you're gonna be thinking during the meditation. Your brain is gonna be racing. But like, it's what Carl Van Zandt said, like all you're trying to do is just create space between your actions and your thoughts. Everything else is happening. Eye of the storm, you just wanna create a little space, right? So we're gonna do that right now. And since you guys are in motion, we don't need to close our eyes or anything. All I want you guys to do is just inhale and exhale. And I'm gonna like, we're gonna spend a whole minute on just inhaling and exhaling, right? Every time you inhale, you wanna raise your stomach. Every time you exhale, you wanna lower your stomach, right? I'm gonna put a minute on the time. As you're inhaling and as you're exhaling, second thing I want you to do, I want you to actually like align your spine. So if you're too much to the left, too much to the right, find that straight line right even shoulders right and with that straight line it's going to help you to breathe a little better now that you're in that straight line you're inhaling you're exhaling um i don't i want you to take yourself away from your desire like your desire to like wish it was louder or wish it was quieter that's like none of your concern your objective is to simply inhale and exhale right so at this current moment Feel the air entering your body and leaving your body. That's exactly where you want it, right? So we're gonna start now. Or we should oh yeah, just keep breathing. We got you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So here we go. I want you guys to inhale. Breathe with me. I'm gonna inhale to the count of five, four, three, two. Hold your breath now. Five, four, three, two. Exhale now. Five, four, three. Two, inhale, five, four, three, two, hold your breath, five, four, three, exhale, five, four, three, inhale, five, four, three, hold, five, four, three, exhale, five, four, three, return to your normal inhale, no your normal exhale. Let's spend like 10 seconds just normally breathing, right? Beautiful. Breathe with me now. I want you to inhale, raise your stomach. Inhale, raise your chest. Exhale, relax your body. All right, again, we'll inhale, inhale, exhale. Two more times, just like that. We'll inhale, inhale. Exhale. Last time now we'll inhale, inhale, exhale. And I want you to return to your normal inhale and your normal exhale. All right, what we're gonna do, we're gonna spend 30 seconds. And all I want you to do in that 30 seconds is just inhale and exhale. Twenty seconds. 15 seconds, 10 seconds, five, four, three, two, and one. How's that feel now? I didn't know when we were supposed to start. I started doing things. I had a time, but good. 
see. That, it it that feels good. I'm already doing it. So she has some extra ones to do. <laughs> and that's simply what it is. Like we're doing breathing exercises, right? But even with that involuntary uh, habit, <laughs> right? We forget sometimes to really breathe correctly. And it could be um, a tension habit where we were basically like holding our breath because of some kind of, you know, learned trauma. It could be uh, we're holding our breath because we're our expectations, right? We might have a little body kick, body cue, a little twitch. And through that meditation, you know, keeping that constant breath and an even flow, it's going to allow us to have uh, more regulation of ourselves and also our situation. And um, that's what the yogis call the stillness. We want that stillness. No, I um I don't see him anymore. Is he still there? Yeah, he is. Okay, so um thank you so much for coming. My co-host will end with you. I um I have to go, but it was such a pleasure having you. And I'm sure our audience will benefit from all the tips and information that you gave. I was absolutely my pleasure. I, I really enjoyed this. Hopefully we can do this again. Like if any of the audience yes. wants to contact me uh, for personal training yoga or even want to check when the next time I do a retreat or a, a gathering, uh, you could uh, contact me, kafeinswilliams.com, uh, or you can also can contact me on uh, Instagram. That's kafein underscore well, and um, on Facebook of Coach Kafein. all right? And then therefore, too, you need to let them know that you're doing an event. Right. Oh yes. This weekend on the twenty fifth, just in case those who are yes. who are in Antigua that they want to come to your event this weekend. Yes, so yes we're doing. Let them know about that. Oh yes, the uh, revolution, right? The revolution is the name of the event. It is actually Sunday. It's a workshop uh, from ten to uh, three. Uh, it's so powerful. It is about the personal revolution of yourself. It is uh, geared for like uh, entrepreneur, uh, self-guided individuals, and just anyone who's really on a path to another level. So it's uh, meditation-based. Um, there's some powerful stuff that we put together. I'm going to actually have another event before I leave Antigua, and we're going to have an event in Grenada, January. So definitely keep you guys posted, but definitely check out the uh, revolution uh, Sunday the 25th. Awesome. And is there any last thing that you have to say that we didn't act that you wanted to say real quick before we end? Um, I think I covered everything. If not, maybe next time. Okay. Well, thank you guys for joining us live and thank you so much, Kathleen. And for those who don't know, he is my cousin. <laughs> this handsome gentleman. Um, and I do appreciate you joining us. And it was a pleasure having you on and explaining because I learned a lot. I didn't even know there was a power yoga. <laughs> so that sounds more like for my speed. So I appreciate you so much. I love you dearly. And thank you guys for another episode of Life Chat with Rip and Phil. Goodbye. We are out on um, live stream. Oh, <laughs>